you use the conscious mind, which is subject to production and extinction. Its thoughts are not true, but it takes control of you and makes you murky and confused. It spins you around and pulls you into the mire. Since your actions are based on it, the wheel keeps turning in a perpetual cycle of birth and death. But if you, your phone thinking is cast out and exhausted once and for all, and no more is produced, and you recognize your true mind, your birth and, and death will cease. Sutra. Now you wish to investigate the unsurpassed body and actually discover your nature. You should answer my questions with a straightforward mind, because that is exactly the way the Sadhagatas of the Ten Directions escaped birth and death. Their minds were all straightforward. And since their minds and words were constant, consistently that way, from the beginning through the intermediate stages to the end, they were never in the least evasive. evasive. Commentary The Vimalakati Sutra says the straightforward mind is the field of enlightenment, and thus the Buddha instructs Ananda. Now you wish to investigate the unsurpassed body and actually discover your nature. You should answer my questions with a straightforward mind. Don't think about it, he says. Don't use false thinking to try to figure out how to answer me correctly. Don't approach it as if you were in combat with me and must figure out what maneuver you should make to defeat me, as if these were the material arts where one must decide how to encounter attack. How to counter attack. The Buddha was concerned that if Ananda tried to answer in a roundabout manner, it would be impossible to arrive a true principle. Why is the straightforward mind the field of enlightenment? At the point when you have not yet given rise to a first thought that is your true mind, your way mind. This is a state of primary thought, the primary truth that exists prior to the spoken word. As soon as you begin thinking, that is to say, as soon as you strike up false thinking, it is no longer your true mind but work. It is your conscious mind, which is full of second thoughts. Instead of speaking up directly and using your straightforward mind to express yourself, you start thinking about it. Ah, oh, I shouldn't say that. If I say that, I'll be wrong. I should say this. But then you think about it again and change your mind again. When you speak, use your primary thought. Why? Because that is exactly the way the Tathagatas of the Ten Directions escaped birth and death. There is a verse about the Chinese character scene, Might, which goes, Three small dots like a cluster of stars and a hook shaped like a crescent moon. Beget animals with fur and horns, yet perfection of Buddhahood comes from it too. The ten Dharma realms are not beyond a single thought of the mind. Your thoughts can send you not only into the animal realm, but into Buddhahood as well. Not only are Buddhas made from the mind, ghosts are creations of the mind, and so are gods, ahas, and bodhisattvas. For instance, you are now studying the Buddha Dharma investigating the Suragama Sutra without fear of whatever difficulties may arise. This is because you repeatedly planted a single indestructible seed of thought into the field of your mind in countless former lives. A body seed has taken root so that now you are studying the Buddha Dharma. Of course, this single thought of the true mind has been helped along by the conscious mind, which thought over and over, should I study the Buddha Dharma or not? You kept sawing the issue back and forth until finally you cut it through it. You cut through it. Their minds were all straightforward and since their minds and words were consistently that way. The Chinese character Ru Shu that way refer specifically to the straightforward mind and do not have the same meaning as when they occurred in the open sentence of the sutra where, where Ru Shu means thus in thus I have heard. 
from the beginning through the intermediate stages to the end. The end refers to wonderful enlightenment, the achievement of Buddhahood. The beginning refers to the stage of dry wisdom which precedes the ten faiths. These positions will be discussed later in the text. The intermediate stages are the long period of cultivation between the stage of dry wisdom and the achievement of Buddhahood through the various stages of Bodhisattvahood to equal enlightenment and then wonderful enlightenment. Through all that time, the Buddhas of the past were never in the, the least evasive and used only the straightforward minds, and so they became Buddhas. Ananda would not use his straight mind to answer the questions, but would answer in roundabout ways, making it impossible to arrive at any true principles. So the Buddha first wanted to explain him clearly that he should give straight answers and not be muddled about it. Now I am speaking a central drama dose for you, said the Buddha. I am explaining how to actually discover your nature, the initial, the initial doctrines concerning the realization of Buddhahood. So you can't be casual or do a lot of hedging when you answer me. You must use your straightforward mind to answer me. Sutra, Ananda, I now ask you, at the time of your initial resolve, which arose in response to the Tathagata's 32 characteristics, that was it. What was it that saw those characteristics and who delighted in them? Commentary, the Buddha again questions Ananda. Ananda, I now ask you, at the time of your initial resolve, in making his decision to cultivate the way, when Ananda used his conscious mind to think about the Buddha's appearance, the Tathagata's 32 characteristics, Ananda was taking advantage of the situation. This is the meaning in, of in response to. So the Buddha asks, what was it that saw those characteristics and who delighted in them. Sutra Ananda said to the Buddha, Won't honored one, this is the way I experienced the delight. I used my mind and eyes. Because my eyes saw the Tathagata's outstanding characteristics, my mind gave rise to delight. That is why I became resolved and wished to remove myself from birth and death. Commentary, Ananda said to the Buddha, Warned or not one, this is the way I experienced the delight. I used my mind and eyes. Most people would say that this was correct, that he used his eyes, his eyes and mind to see the Buddha. But as the Sutra text continues, you will come to find out this is a mistake. Because my eyes saw the Tathagata's outstanding characteristics, my mind gave rise to delight. I used my eyes to look at the Buddha's 32 major and 80 minor characteristics, and in my mind, love arose. What was it I loved? I saw the Buddha's characteristics and adornments were immaculately pure, not at all filthy like bodies born from love and desire. That is why I became resolved and wished to so remove myself from birth and death. I wanted to follow the Buddha leave the home life and cultivate the way. The history of my living home is like that. That is how he answered Shakyamuni Buddha's question. Sutra The Buddha said to Ananda, It is as you say that experience of delight actually occurs because of your mind and eyes. If you do not know where your mind and eyes are, you will not be able to conquer the wearisome dust. Commentary, Ananda told the Buddha that the reason he decided to leave the home life was because he saw the Buddha's supreme characteristics and in his mind he loved them. The Buddha said to Ananda, It is as you say that experience of delight actually occurs because of your mind and eyes. Nonetheless, do you know where your mind is? Do you know where? Do you know if your eyes have the ability to see? Do you know where your eyes are? Those kind of questions are totally senseless to object. His eyes were 
in his face and his mind in his body. Anybody knows that. But that's not the true mind. Nor is that genuine thing. Behind the Buddha's question lies the wisdom of the Tathagata. If you do not know where your mind and eyes are, you will not be able to conquer the wearisome dust. The dust means defilement, and wearisome means disturbing. The dust disturbs your mind and it troubles your nature, so that you can't change your false thinking into your true mind. It's just as when two armies clash and one becomes the victor. You are the victor of if you are able to conquer the dust, that is, if you are able to cut off the road to birth and death. Sutra For example, when a king's country is invaded by thieves and he sends out his troops to suppress and punish them, the troops must know where the thieves are. Commentary The Buddha then presents an analogy. For example, when a king's country is invaded by thieves, who wish to seize the land, he sends out his troops to suppress and banish them, to quell them and drive them out. But the troops he sends must know where the thieves are. In the same way, the reason you cannot put an end to the beginning this ends of birth and death is because you do not know where your mind and eyes are. Sutra It is the forms of your mind and eyes that you flow and turn. I am now asking you specifically about your mind and eyes. Where are they now? Commentary. The more the Buddha says, the less principle there is in it. I will tell you further that it is your fault, the fault of your mind and eyes, that you flow and turn. Why do you get born and die? What causes you to flow and turn in birth and death, revolving endlessly on the turning wheel of the six paths? Your mind and eyes are to blame. Your mind and eyes are at fault for making you undergo birth and death and rendering you incapable of attaining liberation, since they are to blame. I am now asking you specifically about your mind and eyes. Where are they now? Speak up quickly. The Buddha exhausts Ananda.